What's up guys, Jay's Two Cents here and it's hot. It's getting hot, it's been hot, depending on where you are. Uh, might be getting hotter. I live in Southern California and we're pretty close to the desert and it gets really warm. And since I've been gaming a lot more lately, uh, I have the same problem a lot of you do and that is the fact that the game room gets extremely hot. So there are some things I do every single year to try and keep the temperatures as low as possible in the room as well as as low as possible in the system. So I'm gonna go ahead and share some of my best advice with you uh, and debunk some myths and give you guys some advice on how to uh, keep your game room as cool as possible. Assuming you have a game room, wherever your computer is, it's all the same. The inventor of NAND flash memory that changed life as we knew it, Kioxia is a leading provider of flash memory and SSDs. Kioxia offers a line of innovative NVMe SSDs for many environments, including mobile compute, high performance gaming PCs, and hyperscale and enterprise data centers. Leading edge PCIe Gen 4 performance SSDs for AMD Epic and Intel Xeon based servers with PCIe 4.0 technology offer extreme speeds with unparalleled reliability, making Kioxia the obvious choice for those who demand excellence for any use case. To see everything that Kyoxia America has to offer, follow the sponsored link in the description below. All right, so first and foremost, let's go ahead and talk about some of the sciences and stuff that's behind why your game room gets so warm. In your system, there's obviously heat generating sources, and the major ones people usually think of is CPU and your graphics card. Now, although those are the hottest components in your system, everything in your system puts off some sort of heat. The motherboard and the power delivery, of course those heat sinks put off some sort of heat. Your power supply puts off heat. Uh, your hard drives and your SSDs actually put off small amounts of heat. And all of those things combine to make the entire package or the envelope of your computer, everything within the case, a heat source inside of your room. Now, we're gonna talk about some cooling aspects of the computer itself and debunk some myths, and that's kind of where, where I wanna start it off. One of the most common misconceptions and just flat out wrong, and this isn't even opinion based, this is science that you cannot argue with, going with water cooling does not make your room run cooler. The misconception there and the people that don't usually think outside of one particular piece of data point is yes, your CPU and your GPU do run cooler with water cooling, but that's because water cooling is more efficient at extracting heat from the components that the blocks are touching. Now that heat has to go somewhere, and that somewhere is your game room, which is the thing that we're talking about right now, or your gaming area. I'm gonna say game room, but you can just change that term to apply with wherever your, your game system is, and uh, we'll talk about the room in a moment. But when you go with water cooling, you are actually having a more efficient transfer of the hot stuff in your system to the area outside of wherever the radiator is placed. So typically you have an exhaust radiator. A lot of people go with a, a radiator exhaust. That way you're not increasing the internal temperature of your system if you're running high power graphics cards like you know 3090s or 6900 XT, 6800 or even 6700s. The more heat you have in your system, the more heat it's gonna make its way outside of that system. So if you have a radiator at the top and you don't wanna heat the components up, usually you'll bring in fresh air into your system and then you will exhaust the warmer air outside of the case. Water cooling, like I said, more efficiently will in increase the temperature outside of the computer because of the fact that the heat is being moved from one spot to another through the tubes out of the radiator, which is why it's called a heat exchanger or a radiator. It's radiating the heat out of it and usually has an assistant of having a fan push air through it to make that process happen faster. The reality here is that having a water cooled system will actually heat up your room faster than having an air cooled system because you are more quickly removing the heat out of the system. Now, if you're going with air cooling, you have a big cooling tower, you know, heat sink fins and such on top of your CPU and you've got a big giant graphics card like this that has multiple fans and stuff on it and a big thick heat sink, like this is like a three slot sys uh, GPU right here. You're gonna have the card run pretty cool, but you're gonna have essentially the same amount of heat making its way out of the graphics card. Only difference is that instead of being transferred out of a radiator, out into the atmosphere, which again is gonna be your room. It is happening slower because you have the heat transfer going through the cold plate into the heat fins, the fans blowing the heat out of the heat fins into the case, and then the case fans have to exhaust the heat from the case into the atmosphere. So it's happening slower. And a lot of times people might actually notice that graphics cards will get within five to 10 Celsius uh, with an air cooler, a big air cooler like this, versus having a radiator hooked up to it. And that's because the giant air cooler itself in terms of thermal dissipa dissipation is actually not that far behind uh, radiators and water coolers these days. But you'll notice that it takes longer 
for the temperature inside of your case and inside of your room uh, to get warm than it does with something like a custom water loop uh, that is taking heat and exchanging it to the space. So what I've actually done in my game, gaming room right now, which is a, a, a little bit larger than an average bedroom, it's, it's kind of like, it's not a master suite, but it's, a, it's bigger than just a standard square bedroom like you would see. It is an air-cooled RTX 3090 Founders Edition card. So that's got two fans. You guys have seen the, the Founders Edition a million times. However, it does have a full custom water loop on the CPU, which is running an Intel 10900K, which can get pretty dang warm. What I've noticed is that with the particular case that I'm using, which is the Inwin 925, which is the smaller version of the Inwin 928 that's behind me, that is not a sealed chassis. There are, there are gaps everywhere. It's, a, it's basically an open chassis for all intents and purposes. It's not sealed off in any way. So that RTX 3090 just pushes so much heat into the chassis. And I do have obviously uh, three exhaust fans in the back, three exhaust fans at the top, which have a radiator on it and then three clean intake uh, fans on the front. We're still pushing a lot of that heat out into the space. So what I noticed when I started gaming and live streaming again a few weeks back is that the room was getting extremely hot. In fact, I, I would have someone walk into the room while I was gaming they opened the door and they said they were just blasted with just hot air coming out. Like you open the door and there's a pressure change, right? Hot moves to cold. People think cold moves to hot sometimes. No, when it, when it actually comes to uh, the scientific effect of, of heat transfer, it's from hot to cold. And so they would open the door and then would just woof, this rush of hot air just flowing out of the room real quick. And, and when I took a thermometer, because I do have thermometers that I use when I'm, when I'm doing like AC balancing and stuff, it was up to 15 degrees Fahrenheit hotter in that room than it was in the rest of the house. So that tells you right then and there that obviously the room itself um, has some things that needed to be adjusted. Now, before we start adjusting our room, because that's the other half of the equation here, it's not getting the heat out of the computer effectively, it's getting the heat out of the space effectively. Because that's the, that, those are the two major factors here on how well and how comfortable your game room is gonna stay when you live in a hot climate. If you don't live in a hot climate, you're extremely fortunate. But when we live in areas like ours that go over 100 degrees Fahrenheit all the time, or you know, 40 Celsius or whatever the conversion is there, uh, and you start having you know, a computer that has a 350 watt graphics card that is, could be overclocked to 400 watts, and you have a 125 watt CPU that's overclocked, that's a, that's a lot of heat load. Plus all of the power delivery systems, the power supply, the hard drives and all that stuff, that's a lot of heat that is making its way into the, into the room. So you have to account for room ventilation. Now we'll go back to that one in a second because ultimately the heat you're trying to get out of the space is dependent on the heat that you're putting in there. So there's some things that you can do to actually reduce the amount of heat that you're seeing coming out of the computer. First and foremost, it might seem extremely obvious, reduce your overclocks or disable them entirely. Look, one of the things that I am a huge proponent for and an advocate for is overclocking because you can do it safely, you can get extra performance out of your system, probably even knock, knock yourself up to the next tier of graphics card that you couldn't afford by having safe, reliable, stable overclocks. You could, you could go from a 3070 to nearly a 3080 in terms of performance or at least surpass a 3070 Ti stock performance by just moving some sliders. The problem is when you do that, you do increase the heat. So reduce or re deactivate any sort of overclocking that you actually have happening on your system. The second thing you can do, because the frequency is only half of the equation in terms of power and heat output, is start playing around with the idea of undervolting. Now this is something that AMD users are highly familiar with. Undervolting is something that both on CPUs and GPUs has proved effective at reducing cost uh, in terms of how much power the part is drawing, reducing temperatures of how much heat it's generating without ever actually losing any sort of clock speed. Now obviously that's gonna depend on the stability of your core, how much power it wants or likes, the ASIC quality of the, the GPU die itself. So you're gonna have to play around and do some research on your particular graphics card. You can easily find people talking about this on like Tech Power Up, Guru 3D, uh, Reddit, of what people have found to be fairly stable numbers to start with when it comes to things like undervolting. Because if you look at the way the sliders work, if it's a sliding scale of frequency and voltage, Right? If you are leaving the stock voltage and you're increasing the frequency, the voltage to frequency ratio is the same as if you left it stock on megahertz and start reducing the voltage. So it's about that gap between voltage and, and frequency. So if you just are sliding the whole thing together, it, it doesn't really matter if you're overclocking stock voltage or you're undervolting stock clock. That's still about that gap and whether or not it's stable in all of the different type of workloads and different engines and the way that GPUs are utilized. So 
you're going to have to do some research on undervolting. But undervolting and reducing your core clocks, or at least undervolting while maintaining stock core clocks, is going to be the best way to reduce the heat. The single most hot part in your system, or heat generating part in your system, or referred to as a heat load, is your graphics card. First and foremost, whether it's water cooled or whether it's air cooled. I mean, these are pulling the most watts out of anything in your system. So that's where I would start. The other thing you could potentially do is uh, if you're running like prefer maximum performance in the control panel, turn that off and leave it on adaptive because then it will actually reduce the core clocks and it will reduce the voltage when it's not under load. A lot of people, when they're doing overclocking and stuff, they'll go right to preferring maximum performance, which means that the GPU never goes below its base clock. And that's unnecessary heat doing nothing and unnecessary power draw, which creates heat for no reason whatsoever. The same thing with your CPU. Go into your desktop, disable the high performance mode so that the core clock on your GPU, or your CPU rather, can come down when you're not doing anything. There's no reason to leave your CPU running five gigahertz at all times with maximum voltage to, to supply that particular megahertz or that particular frequency when it's not doing anything. I'm the first person to, in the winter time, turn all that crap on. Just, in my on, I mean high performance mode. Prefer maximum performance on the GPU. Overclock it, overvolt it, all that, just max stability at the sake of power draw and heat. But that's because I, in the wintertime, I can open the windows in my room. It's, you know, 16 to 20, not even 20 C outside. So yeah, that's, I mean, we're talking the 60s in Fahrenheit and I get a good cross flow because I got two windows on opposite ends of the room. So that keeps the room nice and cool because I'm ventilating the space. So once you've exhausted reducing your core clock uh, or taking off your overclock, you've undervolted, you've turned off all the, uh, the stuff that disables. So it's weird to turn off stuff that disables. So you've turned on all the power saving features of your stuff and your room is still getting too hot. The next thing is obviously your room's ventilation is not suitable for your particular uh, computer that's in there. Now I've heard people go, well that's, I mean, I don't wanna turn all that stuff off because I'm just gonna lose performance. Well, guess what? As the temperature rises in your gaming room, the performance and the core clocks are going to drop over time of your system. If you had a monitor going from the moment you turn on your computer and start gaming, and let's say you game for two or three hours in that room and it's raised itself 10C or 15C even sometimes, like a stupid amount. I mean, again, it depends on where you live, but that's not unreasonable to see a 10C increase in your gaming room from the time you started to the time you finished. A 10C increase in your space is also a 10C increase in the temperatures of your graphics card and your CPU. They are one-to-one -one ratio. One C raised in the room, one C raised on your component. That is factual. Now, depending on how touchy your components are and how much uh, you overclock is applied, or even if it's not applied, but depending on what the P states, and not just the P states, but the actual curve in terms of the frequency to temperature scale is with your components, a 10C increase might drop you down two bins. It might drop you down two steps sometimes even three, on what your frequency is gonna to go to on your graphics card. So you'll find at the end of the day, you're not benefiting from that overclock anyway because it's stepping down. But if you've brute forced it and you've maxed out your voltage slider as far as you can so that the voltage curve moves as low as possible to give you the maximum frequency earlier, then you still have that amount of heat going into your graphics card, but you're not benefiting from any sort of megahertz uplift because of the fact that the temperature brought it back down. So you can see how that's sort of a perpetuating cycle right there of creating heat unnecessarily. So that's why I say by reducing the frequencies and reducing the core clock uh, or the voltage can actually give you better, more consistent, long-term performance of your graphics card because it takes longer to increase the temperature in your room maintaining those frequencies for a longer duration and with a potentially flatter curve rather than seeing high frequency with a steep drop off as the, frequent, the, the temperature goes up in the room. So megahertz drop as temperature goes up. Finding that intersect is where you kind of find your sweet spot. So that's why I say turning off some of these overclocking functions and such are able to actually allow you to get uh, longer, better frequencies, and this is before we've even started messing with the way we're ventilating the space. Now, if you've got an air-cooled card like this that's putting heat into your case, your case fans are obviously playing a huge role here. So by having your case fans running full speed, because you're like, oh, I gotta cool my system down. So you maybe you go into your motherboard settings and you max out your fans. Well, that's good. You're cooling down the components and you're keeping them cooler longer, but you're heating up the space faster. 
So you're actually creating a faster exchange of air from the case into the volume of air that's inside your gaming room, which means that you are gonna also more quickly heat that room up and reach that max temperature and potentially drop those clock speeds. So you're gonna to wanna to maybe find a balance on your fans that aren't necessarily full speed because you start to wanna keep some of that heat in the case a little bit longer than exchanging it to your, your, your gaming room or your space. That way you can keep that area from heating up so much. I know it might sound counterproductive. Slow down my fans, but that'll just increase my frequency. Not if we've already done the stock clocks and undervolt or potentially a even slightly lower clock boost clock, because remember, GPU boost is gonna push it way farther than the actual boost clock that's listed on the card. But by reducing all of that, means that you're not gonna heat the space up as much. And by having the fans go a little bit slower, you don't need to move the, the heat out nearly as much because you're not creating as much heat. Now, all of these are perfect scenarios if you have no ventilation in your room. There's no, a lot of people live in areas where there's no air conditioning right? Pacific Northwest, welcome to summer, right? Because you guys realize this particular summer so far, it has been brutal because of the jet stream breaking and all of our heat that we normally get moved up into your guys' area. So all that heat that you guys are feeling is the normal summertime heat we feel down here in Southern California. These are things that we've already kind of learned. But the problem is we all have air conditioning, HVAC, or heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, which is HVAC, which most of you guys don't. So these are things that like, you know, getting better ventilation or heating and, and air conditioning into your space uh, isn't something that you really have any control over. So at that point, the very first thing that I would recommend, yeah, we like our privacy and you might have a significant other that's telling you you're way too loud. Like me, I'm a loud gamer. So I'm always told that I'm being too loud, so I shut the door. Just like if you were to seal off all the fan slots in your case, you can expect the case to get really, really hot. So if you think about it this way, your computer system, right? You have your components inside, which are generating heat, your graphics card, your CPU, and your other parts. Think of now your room is the computer case and your computer is the component inside that case creating heat. If you've got the window shut and you've got the door shut, and sure, you've got the air conditioner going if you have one, but if the door is shut, you have a pretty slow exchange of return and supply, because return and supply is, is what you have to balance when it comes to HVAC. If you've got cold air blowing in, but it can't make its way out, if you've got thick plush carpet like I do, it touches the bottom of the door frame, so air can't make its way out. You've pressurized that room, air doesn't flow in as freely, hot air can't get out, temperature rises, whether you have AC or not. Open the door. Just learn to be quieter. Don't talk about so much dirty stuff that you don't want people to hear because you got the door open now. That's the first thing you could do to keep things cooler in that room. The second thing is, if you don't have HVAC, or even if you do, Take a box fan or a cheap fan and put it in the doorway, blowing out. A lot of people think they want to take the colder air that is in, you know, outside of the room and blow it into the room as like another air conditioner. Remember what I said earlier about heat moves to cold? Pushing cold into a hot room doesn't have as much of an effect as taking the fan and exhausting the hot air out of the room because you already have cold air coming in through an AC vent. If you don't, then you could do it either way, I guess. Because at, at that point, you want circulation so air can kind of make its way out of the room. The second thing is get yourself, obviously, a small portable air conditioner. I mean, that might seem like a complete no-brainer. That moves us away from the free uh, ways to, and I didn't say free in the title of this video, but the free ways that you can kind of control the temperatures in your space is get yourself an inexpensive window unit. Although, they may be two, 300 bucks, depending on the, the BTUs that you get. I have found that anything between like a 7,500 BTU to 12,000 BTU is more than enough. In fact, when I had one in my downstairs game room before I moved it upstairs, uh, having one of those on was often too much. I was getting cold in that space. And we're talking like when I had the SLI 2080 Ti's and Skunk Works with the X299, uh, 6980 XE or whatever CPU it was that was delitted and overclocked, uh, it was too hot without it. With the small $290 air conditioner, it was too, too cold. So that's something that you can consider. But last but not least, the only other thing I can recommend, gaming at nighttime and opening the windows as best you can. One of the things that, uh, when I first started this channel at that old house, if you guys remember that, where I first built Skunk Works and all that, that house was built in 1963. The HVAC unit in that house is a joke. That room, at some, sometimes I even showed a thermometer, it would be over 90 degrees Fahrenheit in that room when I was filming. I know the struggles of having a hot room. 
So these are the things that I have done to create a better, more comfortable gaming environment without having to completely break the bank. Just to recap, myth, water cooling does not make your room cooler because the computer part, see people think the GPU and the CPU are colder. Therefore, it's not putting as much heat off in the space. No, it's colder because it took more heat and it's throwing it into your space. So the misconception is backwards. Uh, water cooling heats up your room more and faster because more heat is making it there. Second of all, reduce your clocks, reduce your overclocks, reduce your voltage because you'll find at the end of the day, if it gets too hot in that room anyway, you're losing all of those benefits. I guarantee you those overclocks are gone, but your voltage is still unnecessarily high, creating heat for no reason whatsoever. Second of all, increase the ventilation to that space. You'd be surprised what just a fan in a doorway can do if you don't have air conditioning in that room. So that's it. This is something I was thinking about because I've been doing, a, a, if you guys have been following on Twitter and stuff, you know I've been live streaming more. I've live streamed like five times in the last two weeks. Um, and as you can imagine with four or five hour gaming streams, how hot it can get in that space, even with one graphics card where I used to have two graphics cards. And that's just because of the fact that these are the things that are causing the heat to rise. So what are your best tips? If you live in a hot environment and you've got a gaming room that gets way hot, what have you done to try and reduce those temperatures? Sound off in the comments below with your best tips. Subscribe if you're new around here and share this video that you with someone that you know is complaining about their game room getting far too hot. Thanks for watching guys. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.